Hello, superhumans. If you are watching this broadcast and you are immunized or you are wearing glasses, you are already a superhuman. We are here at this incredible inflection point for our species. When you think about it, 100 years ago, there were only 2 billion humans on Earth and only 20% of them were literate. That's 400 million people. Today, we have 7.5 billion people, 85% literacy. That means 6.5 billion people are able to contribute to the growth of our knowledge. That's why we're seeing this super convergence of all of our technologies. And that's pushing every technology and every science forward, including genetics and biotech. Whereas now, it's possible to read, write, and ultimately hack the code of all of life. And that's really exciting for all the reasons that Julian just mentioned. And it's also really scary because these, like any technologies, could be abused. We are going to see these technologies applied through our healthcare, where we are going to transition from our world of generalized healthcare based on population averages to precision healthcare based on each person's individual biology to predictive healthcare once we have big data pools of genetic and life information that allows us to take preventive action to reduce harms. But the killer application of these technologies is going to be in not just changing the way we make babies, but changing the nature of the babies we make. We're going to move from conception through sex to conception through in vitro fertilization and then embryo screening and then limited genome editing of pre-implanted embryos. And we're going to do it both to reduce risks and to confer benefits and there will be no natural line between those two. There are lots of great reasons, like Julian just mentioned, why we can and I think ultimately should do this. Nature by definition and genetics by definition are buggy. That means that we, many of our children are born with these terrible, in some cases deadly, genetic uh, mutations. And if we can fix or prevent them, why shouldn't we? We're now experiencing a global coronavirus epidemic. If we could at some point in the future safely engineer future humans to be immune to all types of deadly pathogens and viruses, that would conceptually save our species. We know our planet is warming. We know that our, our sun is going to die and this planet will be uninhabitable. If you believe, as I do, that humans should go on, we need to find a way to make that possible. But there are very real and significant risks that come with this technology. It could be, they could be abused. We could use it to limit the diversity, the essential diversity, which is the sole survival strategy of our species. They could be distributed in an unequal way that could divide us in really dangerous and terrible ways. And so when we look at these technologies, it's certainly the wrong answer to say they can never be used. If we have these tools that could save our future generations from terrible suffering and death, whether it's our children or preventing our parents from getting dementia or Alzheimer's, we should do that. If the same way, if there are terrible abuses, we can prevent them. And the way we're going to find this balance is not by having an either or environment, but we need to find a middle ground where we use a risk benefit analysis to find the best way forward because we have to find a way to make sure our most sacred values can guide the application of our most powerful technologies. And that should be all of our business. Thank you.